بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رسپیکٹڈ جنرل ظہیر الاسلام چیئرمین سینٹر فار گلوبل اسٹریٹجک اسٹڈیز اسلام آباد ڈسٹنگوش پینلسٹ ریپرزنٹیٹو فرام اکیڈمیا ڈپلومیٹس ایمبیسڈرس تھنک ٹینکس لیڈیز اینڈ جینٹلمین السلام علیکم اینڈ اے ویری گڈ آفٹر نون It's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you all to this seminar on cyber security. I would like to extend my gratitude to Center for Global and Strategic Studies, Islamabad, and officers of the National Security Division for their hard work in organizing this seminar and for inviting me to talk. Ladies and gentlemen, the decision to hold this seminar was taken a month back when in the National Security Division, we were visited by a representative from a cyber security agency who shared with us some important information about cyber security in Pakistan. This really motivated me to gather more information from some distinguished specialists in this field and hence this seminar. Today, it's our, it would be our endeavor to provide you necessary information on this very crucial and sensitive subject of cyber security, which is very important for Pakistan, facing terrorism and threats from both East and West. Ladies and gentlemen, wars have long been fought on land, in the air, and at the sea. Future wars, however, will be fought at the cyberspace. Cyber warfare is internet-based involving politically motivated attacks on information and information systems. Cyber warfare attacks can disable official websites and networks, disrupt, disable essential services, even steal, alter or destroy classified data and cripple financial systems, among many other possibilities. Cyber insecurity is now well established as a serious unconventional threat. How does a cyber warfare work? An electronic army of simply hackers uses computers to gain unauthorized access into the computers of a target country with the objective of controlling or crippling the target country's computer networks. That is very scary because there is an embedded computer in almost all modern devices like our own mobile phones. Imagine an enemy country's electronic army literally taking over our power plants, pipelines, refineries, airlines, banks and even nuclear reactors. In 2010, online hackers who called themselves as India Cyber Army attacked 36 Pakistani government websites. In 2013, Indian hackers Nick 7 Fox defaced the Election Commission of Pakistan's website. In retaliation, Pakistani hackers who called themselves as the true cyber army defaced 1059 websites of Indian election bodies. On September 18, 2016, militant attacks an Indian Army Brigade in Uri Following that incident, there was a full-fledged cyber war between Pakistani and Indian hackers. What these incidents tell us, beyond anything else, is the world we live in has changed, and it has changed fast. What matters is the data. In the past, when someone wanted to steal data, 
they would have to physically access files and copy or photo them to get the necessary data. But now in the world we live, maybe thousands of miles away, literally on the other side of the globe, one can get access to our data and vital information as cyberspace follows no geographical boundaries or limitations. Data that is compromising and data that is sensitive can influence our lives and security. The WannaCry virus, which made the headlines recently, is a type of virus called ransomware, which makes your data unreadable. Protecting this data is as important as protecting ourselves. Our governments and various state institutions are, uh, store sensitive data. While it is safe to assume that our sensitive agencies and organizations protect their data and take steps to ensure its integrity, it's not always true in most organizations. For example, imagine if someone hacked our Federal Board of Revenue or the NADRA database. Imagine enemy agencies getting access to our intelligence agencies' confidential data or sabotaging or intercepting nuclear information. The possibilities are endless. That is what makes it terrifying and alarming. The seminar aims to raise awareness on these issues and the choices we have as users within the cyberspace. The threat of cyber warfare is real. In, in 2009, the Indian Army's Military Operations Directorate, MO Directorate, conducted war game co code named Divine Matrix. In 2010, the, the Indian National Security Advisor drafted an offensive cyber warfare strategy that brought all the intelligence agencies and the RAW on the same platform. In 2010, Stuxnet, an American-Israeli malicious computer bomb, brought down Iran's Datan's uranium plant in Isfahan province without Iran even knowing as to what was going on with its centrifuges. In 2012, Shamon, an Iranian-linked bomb, attacked Saudi Aramco. In 2015, Chinese hackers pillaged secret details on Lockheed Martin F-35, the fifth-generation stealth multi-role joint strike fighter. On December 9, 2016, U.S. President Obama ordered a review of U.S. election-related serious cyber attacks by Russia. It is predicted that global annual cyber crime cost will double, in six, double to $6 trillion annually by 2021, and cyber security market will, rose, will soar to $101 billion in 2018 and would touch $170 billion by 2020. The topmost five countries with best cyber warfare capabilities are USA, UK, Russia, China, and Israel. To achieve the status of cyber readiness, Pakistan needs to address areas like incident response to counter the threat on immediate basis with greater investments in cyber research and development, education and capacity and skill development. Ladies and gentlemen, the situation in Pakistan in the cyber space and security is not that discouraging. Concerned organizations, both civil and military, have taken cognizance and are conscious about the necessity of cyber security and have made tangible efforts in this respect, in their respective domains. Our Ministry of IT has worked very hard to formulate and get the Prevention of Electronic Act 2016 legislated to prevent unauthorized acts with respect to information systems related offenses as well as mechanisms for their prosecution and make provisions for prevention of electronic crimes. When we talk about national security, we talk about the security of over 200 million Pakistanis and sovereignty of a country that is strategically located and economically emerging. I want to conclude by saying that Pakistan presently facing the menace of both terrorism and warfare from both sides must first consider national cyber security strategy as an integral part of national security policy. Cyber security must be ensured in a coordinated manner through cooperation and coordination between all the relevant agencies due to their interconnectedness in existing infrastructure and services in cyberspace. 
and National Cyber Security Command Authority comprising both civil and military authorities is a need of the hour to oversee and coordinate the efforts of many organizations who at present are working in isolation as islands on cyber security. Pakistan must establish its foothold in cyberspace and formulate its state policy before the world further enhances its capabilities and in this field we feel left behind. Ladies and gentlemen, National Security Division serves as a Secretariat for National Security Committee and the recommendations of this seminar would be processed and put up for consideration before the National Security Committee, which is the highest policy-making and decision-making body on security-related issues at the national level presided over by the Prime Minister of Pakistan. Thank you very much.